here in your presence, to spend time with you, to wait upon you, Father. Thank you for sending Jesus, Lord, as we celebrate this Easter season. Oh, Father, it staggers my mind and my heart every time I think about the sacrifice that you made, and you made it for us at our worst, Father, at our worst. And even at our best, we weren't doing too good. But you gave yourself so thoroughly and completely without reservation, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, Father, speak to us today. Give us ears to hear and eyes to see. Grant that the eyes of our understanding, the eyes of our spirit, man, would be enlightened, Father God, that we might know the full potential to which you have called us, each and every one, Father, yes. all by your grace. Thank, thank you, God. Father, that as well we've got the assurance that you have called us, you have equipped us, Father, by your spirit, and that you've got a purpose for us to be in this world today, reaching the lost and telling others of the goodness that we've found in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you, Ralph. Thank you, folks, for joining with us today in this service. We're so glad to have this opportunity to be with you. We're here with our church family in Jacksonville at Church on the Creek. and. And, uh, church in the cabin. Church in the cabin. Yeah, we, we one of these days we might be out on the creek, hadn't we? <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Mm. Praise God. Well, we're just so thankful for this time together with you, time and opportunity to be in the Word of God. And, and uh, I, I want to just continue today. We, we keep kind of getting a little bit sidetracked. It, it's funny. I, years ago, I love Fred Price, Dr. Fred Price that went on to glory here about a year ago I guess now and uh, he was just the best teacher I mean I love Dad Hagen and there's none that, you know everybody's just so good in their own right mm -hmm. and uh, uh, there are things that Dad Hagen taught us that I would not be here today were it not for what we learned sitting at his feet and uh, Fred Price helped refine some of those things that we learned even from Dad Hagen Fred was just the consummate teacher but I used to get aggravated and frustrated with Fred because I'd get a series of his messages to listen to and they'd be about a particular subject. And uh, when I would listen to those tapes, it would take him 20 or 30 messages to say what Dad Hagen or somebody else would say in about half a dozen or a dozen. <laughs> and, and, and Fred one day, it's kind of funny, I, I think he must have been attuned to the spirit of God who was attuned to my heart and my questionings because I kind of you know I get frustrated with it and I didn't really murmur or complain but I probably thought some things to myself and, <clears throat> and I can remember one day Fred stopped in the middle and he he'd kind of gone down a little bit of a rabbit trail he was teaching on uh, a particular subject and he went down this side track and he stopped him and he said some of you might get frustrated with me doing this he said but I'm first and foremost a pastor and I've got to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit to minister to my people. And so there's times that he'll take me aside on a particular issue and, and uh, have me minister along those lines. And I find that happening to myself now. So, Brother Fred, uh, you know, thank God for your example and your testimony. Amen. And thank God for your teaching. Amen. Yes. I remember, uh, in fact, when I went to see a particular young lady that used to attend the church, uh, she was given three weeks to live. I met her when she only had two weeks left. And a day or two before I went to visit her, I had been feeding on Fred Price's book, What Faith Is. Mm -hmm. And I mean, that book was just burning on the inside of me. And I got up there and I preached that book to her and her parents. I'd been told, someone in the church told me about this young lady, said she, she asked for me to come see her. And I got up there and I assumed that was the case. You know, you don't expect church folk to lie to you or misrepresent anything. <laughs> So I walk in, I introduce myself, at like like I got good sense and like they knew who I was and expected me to come. Turns out she, not only had they not invited me, they didn't know who I was. And they didn't know she had sent me. And so I go in there though and I'm loaded for bear. I just start preaching Fred's book almost from beginning to end. And uh, I got through and I, I prayed with the young lady and I told her, I said, now before I pray for you, I said, what would you do if Jesus just suddenly appeared and held in his hands something and said, here's your healing. Uh, I'm giving it to you now and, and handed it to you. She said, well, I'd say thank you. I said, that's all you got to do. Yeah. I said, you just start thanking God that healing's yours now because we're going to pray and we're going to believe we receive it when we pray. And that means it's yours, right? And she said, yeah, yes, sir. 
And so that's what she started doing. I told her, you don't have to leave the hospital. You don't have to refuse medication. You don't have to do anything. Mm -hmm. Listen, doctors aren't our enemy. No. I believe sometimes the Lord uses doctors for us and, uh, and uses them as, as yet another weapon in his arsenal to fight what the devil intended for evil. Mm -hmm. I, I know in my own life that there was a time where I had overdosed, and thank God, you know, the doctors did what they could, which wasn't much, but at least they tried. Yeah. And there have been times in my life they did things for me that, that uh, thank God for the benefit it yielded. Well, anyway, <clears throat> you know, I'm just so thankful for what we have learned of God's Word and, and um, <laughs> thankful for what the Lord has done and, and is continuing to do in our lives. Uh, turn with me, if you would, to John 14. John 14, uh, we've been teaching on this subject, the works of Jesus, and we've gone every direction you can possibly think of. We've talked about the Holy Spirit and and a little bit about tongues. I think I'm going to have to just probably the next series or so teach about the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit. A lot of people are confused about uh, the person of the Holy Spirit and His present day ministry in our lives. And we're talking about that a little bit in this series of messages because what Jesus has called us to do can only be wrought through a right relationship with God and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. In other words, you've got to be born again and filled with the Holy Ghost if you're going to do what God called us to do as believers. And so over in John fourteen twelve it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me. Now that, that term, verily, verily, means in, in the most certain of terms. Mm -hmm. now, now Jesus is speaking here, and, and he said, without a doubt, <laughs> if I were to paraphrase this, if you believe on me, the same works I'm doing, you're going to do. Mm -hmm. Now that's my paraphrase. That's not what the King James says. Don't get all uptight about that. But, but what he says in the King James is very simply, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do, shall he do also. Now, it's real interesting, and we're ultimately going to talk about uh, the means by which Jesus wrought these things, but also his methods. I think most of us know somewhat about the means. We know that it was God the Father that anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power, and who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, Acts 10.38. It tells us it was by the power of God, the Holy Spirit, working through him that these things were wrought. But how was he able to facilitate that moving of the Holy Spirit through his life and ministry? Or, or was it even him? Amen. We'll, we'll talk about that eventually. We're not going to today. Uh, but it's so important for us to to go to the Word of God to get the answers we need for life. And it's kind of interesting here. Uh, when he talks about the works that he did, what is he talking about? Mm -hmm. I mean, Jesus did so many things. Uh, he, he healed the sick. He cleansed the lepers. He restored sight to the blind. He set captives free. Uh, how many of you know somebody that's tormented emotionally in life? Mm -hmm. Well, they're, they're in captivity. They're in bondage. I know I used to live that way, and thank God he set me free from it. I, I used to tell folks I didn't get depressed, I lived depressed, and that's why I was suicidal mm -hmm. and came to a point in my life where I tried numerous times to take my own life and finally succeeded after I tried and decided I really didn't want to after all. But that's something you just don't toy with, yeah. amen? Yeah. I took all those pills, and, and they were prescription medication. I took them all, and I thought, well, this is stupid. Well, you don't think that after you take them. You think that before you take them. And listen, I don't want anybody to ever get the idea that just because Pastor Mike at one time in his life was foolish enough to overdose and died and went to heaven, that's not the route to go. Mm -mm. Amen. Listen, uh, when I realized what had happened in my life and who was responsible, now I bore some responsibility because I went along with it, but ultimately I had an adversary I didn't even recognize. Right. You know, as a child I'd been taught to believe in God. I'd even uh, been taught the gospel somewhat and received Jesus and that's why I went to heaven when I did overdose. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Amen. But I, I, very, I had very limited knowledge about God even at that. And I had no knowledge about the devil. I remember what an outrage it was when Hal Lindsey wrote the book, the book, Satan is Alive and Well on Planet Earth. Do, do y'all, any of y'all remember that? I don't remember when he wrote it. I remember when I read it some years after he wrote it. But there was great outrage even at that point when I, I read the book. And uh, people were outraged. They just thought it was sacrilege to talk about the devil. But right. And I don't think we need to give him a whole lot of airtime, believe you me. <laughs> uh, but at the same time, Jesus didn't ignore exi his existence. No, thank and, God. And, uh, and neither did Paul, uh, amen, or, or, or Simon Peter. 
Simon Peter told us to resist him steadfast. Uh, James told us that as well. And yeah. resist him. In the, he said he's your adversary. Well, when I realized the devil was the one ultimately that cultivated that misery in my life, I decided if I didn't have another purpose to live other than make, living to make the devil miserable, it was worthwhile. Yeah. And yes. I, I, I really believe that. You know, it, listen, if your life is so miserable you just can't stand it, you're probably living in the wrong direction, <laughs> number one, amen? And uh, what I found was this, and, and I thought just in, in the worst case scenario, if I couldn't enjoy life for me, I wasn't going to throw my life away or the time I had on this earth away. I wanted to find ways to invest that in other people, yeah. not even out of a personal desire to make that investment, but out of a yearning to help somebody. If I can't make my life better, at least I can make somebody else's life better. <laughs> and see, the devil would love to cancel people out. That's the big thing of the day, isn't it? The cancel culture. He'd love to cancel out your life because it would eliminate your influence or it would negate your influence and cause your influence to have a, a negative impact on people. Listen, I've seen, I've seen families that, that long ago, someone in that family committed suicide and generation after generation after generation of their their children and grandchildren and great grandchildren struggled with suicide mm -hmm. because it had been accepted in their family yeah. and it was just kind of well that's just part of the family curse I guess mm -hmm. and, and so a lot of people just felt like it was their destiny and they felt helpless to overcome it. I don't know anybody else in my family that was as foolish as I was. I did that all on my own, I guess. But uh, you know. Uh, there's there's more to life than than suffering what the devil would love to inflict on you. Yeah. Well, anyway, Jesus is saying, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. Now, what happened here was Jesus was explaining in the prior verses to Philip about uh, how, well, he, he Philip said, Lord, show us the Father, and it sufficeth us. In other words, Jesus, you know, kind of peel back, peel back, uh, you know, the world before us and let us see into eternity and see God the Father with our natural eyes. That's mm -hmm. what he was wanting to see, God with his natural eyes. Yeah. And, and uh, I, I guess he'd accept his spiritual eyes. I don't want to, you know. But anyway, he's show us God. We want to see God. And Jesus informed me, he said, everything I've done has been representative. These are my words, but every, everything I've done, everything I've said has been representative of the Father. He said, I didn't come to do my will. I came to do the will of him that had sent me. Yes. And, and, and so the words that I speak are his words. The, the works that I do are his works. And we know that Jesus did those works, how? By the power of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And, and, and uh, glory to God. Mm. So... You know, that tells me something. If we're going to do what he's called us to do, we need the Holy Spirit too. Yes, we do. Amen. Uh, a lot of people get confused. We're going to get into that a little bit more later on. But I want to stop here and just address a, a, kind of a, to me, a central issue. Why, why bother to learn how to do the works that Jesus did? You know, somebody else will do it, right? Their preacher will do it or the pastor will do it. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how many people in the Bible went to Jesus in behalf of another. There was a nobleman went to Jesus for his son. The Syrophoenician woman went to him for his daughter. Her daughter, yeah. Amen. Her daughter, yeah. I'm sorry. She wasn't trans... <laughs> Never mind. She wasn't confused. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Y'all forgive me if anybody out there gets offended. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> we got seven times, seven more times to go today that they can forgive me. <laughs> yeah, no, okay. Well, anyway, you know, thank God for His mercy. Amen. I, I need a little bit every day of my life. Yes, me too. But we've got all these different individuals that that went to Jesus or went to God in behalf of another uh, because they had a need. What about Jairus? You know, who who did he approach Jesus for? Well, he approached him for his daughter, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. uh, what if the only reason God has not ministered to that loved one that you know that's either oppressed as we were sharing earlier or afflicted with some form of infirmity. And, and, and don't, just, don't just say, oh, they were born that way. There was a man born blind. Yeah. Jesus healed, right? Yeah. Don't, don't resign yourself to, you know, making excuses, okay? Yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm getting kind of blunt. I just don't have a lot of time today, mm -hmm. and I'm not trying to be blunt for bluntness sake, but sometimes we just need to see what's before us. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, any one of these people could have said, well, you know, everybody gets sick or everybody does this. Uh, the, the disciples even fussed at blind Bartimaeus when he began to appeal to Jesus to heal him. Mm. You know, the yeah. son of David, have mercy on me. Right. They they started telling him to hush, shut up, be quiet. You're mm. bothering us. Wow. Don't trouble the master. Mm. And, and uh, you know, there's some people today that have kind of that same little attitude. But but what if the only reason God has been unable to minister to those you love, those you care about, and and, and listen, don't even pretend when you. You know, if you were God, you'd do this. You don't have to be God to do this. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? How many of you have ever been in the grocery store or you've been out shopping somewhere and, and you saw somebody, some child that was afflicted and pitiful? Maybe they suffered a deformity of some kind. You know, God heals deformed children every day. Yes. Lord, we had a lady years ago and, and uh, she had a child that, that it was a grandchild actually that had no toes on his feet mm -hmm. and the child was a toddler this wasn't a newborn right. it was a toddler and she asked me one day I was teaching uh, healing in a Bible school that we were <laughs> conducting at the time she asked me she said brother Mike would Jesus heal a child's feet would he would he give them toes I said well yeah he would now there's times that you you say something by the uh, by, the unction of the whole. In other words, down on the inside of you, it just rises up. Yeah. And and, uh, and your natural mind is thinking, ah, oh, I've never seen this, never heard this before. But your spirit man is connected to God, and you just speak out of your heart, out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak. Mm -hmm. Thank God there was more in my heart than there was in my head that day, and it came up, and I spoke, and I said, well, yes, yeah, sister. I said, you just take that little baby in your arms and you hold those feet out there and you look at those feet and say, toes, I command you to grow in Jesus' name. And, and she did. She went home and did that with that grandbaby as soon as she could get a hold of him. And she came back in a couple of days. She said, do you know what happened? I said, what's that, sister? She said, you know the eyes on a potato? And I think everybody's seen a potato when it started to butt out. It had little eyes on I said, yes, ma'am. She said, on the end of each foot were five little buds that came mm -hmm. out and started to, to grow. grow and just within a, a, a very short time I don't know if it was even a week that baby grew a full set of toes mm -hmm. that toddler yeah. had toes they hadn't had them amen I guess that baby could have lived without before. toes hadn't had them yeah it was already a toddler a couple mm -hmm. of years old uh, hadn't had them but but those toes grew mm -hmm. we've we've prayed for children that had heart murmurs and those heart murmurs were healed yeah and, and uh, we've just seen all kinds of things happen along those lines and, and uh, you know but but it always entailed somebody that cared about that child caring enough to get involved like that grandmother wanting yeah. to find out what God might think about this and when she found out she acted on it yes so would it be worth it to you? You know, you, you may not like seeing somebody suffer, but do you dislike it enough to do what you can to help eliminate it? Yeah, amen. To help change that situation. It doesn't have to be their plight in life. Uh, if God can find somebody that he can use to minister to them in that situation. And that's my ambition. Mm -hmm. Jesus didn't come here to, to demonstrate everything that he was in, in an exclusive manner as though no one else could get, do it. Isn't it amazing? He's really sharing part of the secret to his success here. Now, he could have said, all oh, folks, you're, you're not me. You could never do this. But he says just the opposite. Mm -hmm. He said, if you believe on me, the works that I do shall you do also. Amen. And uh, it's so important that we understand what the Word of God has to say on these subjects, no matter what our church has taught us, no matter what our pastor has taught us. I'm not trying to trash talk your church or your pastor, no. but if they've not taught you the Word of God, they've taught you wrong. And I don't mean they, you know, it, it, it's one thing to teach you what they think the Word says. It's another thing to just let the Word speak for itself mm -hmm. and to share it with you. Mm -hmm. So our ambition in this series of messages is to learn what works Jesus did and understand how He did those works. Understanding how uh, speaks of the ability to do it as well as the means by which He did these things. Now let me say this as well. Much has been taught religiously about Jesus mm -hmm. that's inaccurate. Right. You know, people have said things about him, pastors have said, ministers have said things about Jesus that just aren't true. And I don't believe it's that they're malicious. 
uh, they're just like like parents that are just saying what they've been taught mm -hmm. and unfortunately in a lot of seminaries they've been taught things that just are not accurate there been there's been a lot more investment in excuses for the absence of god than in instructions to invite his presence in our lives and his power along with him amen mm -hmm. and, and so it's important and listen this kind of confusion has been going on since before time itself, it seems like. Let, let me give you some examples here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to share some things about Job this morning. And, and uh, you know, because Job, the book of Job has been used to justify all manner of human suffering and affliction. Yes. Yes. Unending. Yep. Unending. Yep. Most people don't know it, but scholars, and I'm talking about, it doesn't matter if they're traditional denominations, Methodist, Baptist, or whatever, or full gospel, across Holy Ghost. As some, <laughs> scholars across the board. Mm -hmm have agreed upon the fact that the whole plot of Job was uh, took place, the whole book spans a space of time of about nine months. Right. Nine months. Right. I don't think we've got to settle for nine months of suffering if we'll learn the lessons from Job oh, that God yeah. intended we would. Amen. But, but, you know, a lot of people want to make a lifetime out of what took Job nine months. Yes. If Job, Job was a slow learner, <laughs> you know? <laughs> if he was a slow learner, it only took Lord him nine knows. months. <laughs> Lord help the rest of us, right? So Job 38, 1, listen to this. This is what God had to say about Job out of the whirlwind. It says, The Lord answered Job out of the whirlwind and said, Who is this that darkeneth counsel by words without knowledge? Mm -hmm. Now that's kind of vague to us, isn't it? And, and I want to finish reading this. It's, <laughs> you know, can I just give you my paraphrase on this next verse? Verse 3. Sit upright, young man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, he said gird up now thy loins like a man for I will demand of thee and answer thou me mm -hmm. I believe what God was saying Job it's time for you to shut up this loose yeah. rambling and listen up yeah. amen yeah. And, and and there's something to be said for that you know Job's plight didn't, didn't turn around and the turnaround did not start until he quit talking and started listening yeah. and that's one of the big keys to being able to uh, see the works of Jesus wrought in our lives and the lives of others is a willingness to listen mm -hmm. and not just say, well, I, I, I know what I've... Job, you know, he, he's along in life a little ways. He had children, had a big family, had accumulated great wealth. Yeah. This wasn't his first rodeo, mm -mm. Uh, but he wasn't doing good. Mm -mm. And, and he started running his mouth, and it's kind of interesting because really basically what Job did was he blamed God. Now, his friends came to him and said, no, God's all right. He's just a just God, and, and he exacts justice and judgment. He said, but you're, you're in sin, Job. <laughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then there was his treasure of a wife. We're going to talk about his wife in a little bit here. <laughs> Do you remember what his wife said? Yes. Just curse God and die. <laughs> See, she Bad thought. Advice. Yeah, she thought God was the problem. Wow. And and, and have you ever thought why blaming did she God. think everybody's blaming God? Well, no, not his friends. His friends thought, but but Blame they him. but they had a terrible image of God that God was the afflictor and the tormentor. Mm -hmm. Listen, I you know there's people out there today in church telling folks today, oh, oh God's got a purpose for this. No, God doesn't have a purpose for it. His purpose is for you to be set free. Yeah. You want to see the purpose of God, look at Isaiah 61, yeah. which was Jesus' commission. Yeah. He came to open prison doors. He came yeah. to heal the sick and yes. deliver the afflicted, amen, right. the oppressed right. and the bound. He didn't come to torment people and make them miserable. Right. He didn't come to further the devil's agenda. Right. He came to cancel. If you want to cancel something, let's cancel the devil and his oh, efforts really. in people's Amen. lives. Amen. Yes. So uh, listen to this out of the Message Bible, that same verse. Job 38, 2 3, it says, Why do you confuse the issue? Why do you talk without knowing what you're talking about? Pull yourself together, Job. Up on your feet, stand tall. I have some questions for you, and I want some straight answers. I like that. I think that was probably more more to the spirit of how God addressed Job mm -hmm. in that day. Mm -hmm. Now, I want to say something here. What does he mean, uh, confuse the issue? You know, it's really easy to read over these things without thinking about the personal implications, isn't it? Mm -hmm. You know, evidently what Job said or was saying was confusing some people. Yeah. Now, what was going on was uh, Job's friends were blaming Job. Mm -hmm. 
You're in sin. Right. You're just a wicked man. You can't help it. You were born that way. You're in sin. Mm -hmm. And then Job, in turn, rather than bearing the weight of that guilt, began to shift the blame to God. Like Adam and Eve. Well, like Adam and Eve. <laughs> But like a lot of folks today, yes. they, rather than reading the Bible and finding out who the enemy is and pinning the tail on the real donkey, right. they're trying to saddle God with the responsibility for the suffering and affliction yes. of humanity. The acts of the devil. Mm -hmm. Amen. What, what do people do when they, they do the same thing Job did? They confuse the issue. It, and, and think about it a minute. Where did Job's wife get her information about God? From Job. From Job. Mm. There's a lot of personal implication in that, isn't there? Yeah. yeah. What do the people around you think about your God by the life you live? Preach it, brother. By the words you speak. What yes. What have you... And ultimately, you know, God calls Job to task on this. We're going to get on to this in a minute. But God calls Job to task on this. Um, I love what Job says, though, finally in response after he's undergone the first pop quiz here. In Job 42, 1 through 6, it says, Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou canst do everything, <laughs> and that no thought can be withholden from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore, I, uh, therefore have I uttered that I understood not, things too wonderful for me which I knew not. In other words, do you know what Job has come to the conclusion of? <laughs> He didn't know God near as well as he, he thought, thought he, he did, did or claimed yeah. to. Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. How many of you love to be wrong? No. Do you know you can learn to love him. to be wrong? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> change you. That's right. That's that's the point exactly. Mm -hmm. See, if it was if if this was God afflicting Job, what can you do to, to challenge this? Right. right. You just got to grin and bear it and learn to live with it, right? Yeah. But if it's Job, Job can make some adjustments. He can right. repent. He can change direction yeah. if he needs to. Yes. I mean, worst case, worse, if, if, if there's some affliction in someone's life because there's sin in their life, they can repent. They can find mercy and grace, right. and they can turn to God from their sin right. for strength to recover themselves, right? Right. Right. right? That's ultimately what Job had to do himself. Mm -hmm. But, but he's begun to address God in the context of what he's begun to learn here. And he's simply saying, God, I didn't know you as well as I thought. You know, listen, unless you know everything, you don't know God as well as you thought. I'm still learning to this day. Dad Hagen made the observation. We were at Ramo when Dad was in his late 50s, I believe. And Dad Hagen made the observation one day. He said, you know, the more I learn about the Lord, the more I learn about God's word, the more I see how little I really have learned and how little I really know. There's no sin in admitting the obvious. God is... God is infinite. Yes, yes, yes. I mean, if we studied every second of every day we live on this earth, mm -hmm. we, we, we don't have the ability to gain the full grasp of all that God is, all that he's done. Right, right. But what we do need to grasp is this. God is love. Amen. Amen. He sure is. He loves you. He's not... See, the way Job described him, God was basically a sadist, and you'd have to be a masochist to love him. And that's why a lot of religion so, is yeah. presenting God today. Yeah. Oh, he might, he, you know, come serve Jesus, fall at the feet of God. He might give you cancer if you're real lucky. Ooh. Well, that's not God. That's not my God. No, no, that's the God of this world, the no, little G no, God. Not. He's the, the, the thief that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. destroy. Amen? Yeah. Glory to God. And, and so Job goes on, and I, I love what he says down here. He, he says in verse 3, it says, Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore have I uttered that I understood not. Things too wonderful for me which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare thou unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, but now mine eye seeth thee. <laughs> Wherefore I born. What's he saying? He said, I've lived on the basis of rumors and misinformation, but I see clearly now. And it's at that point it became, you know, Prior to this, the Bible tells us that all these things that Job did and said, he didn't charge God foolishly. Do you know what that means? It doesn't mean that Job was right in what he said. It means that he wasn't ill-intended. He was ignorant. Yeah. 
In fact, we're told that in, in Job's day, God winked at the sins of man in that day uh, because of man's ignorance. He, he didn't hold man accountable for what things men didn't know. But now he's informing Job, and Job's becoming accountable. And, and uh, I tell you, it's just, <laughs> you know, we can either admit the obvious, we just don't know God as well as we ought, wow. or, or we can pretend otherwise and blame God the rest of our lives. But it isn't going to change God, thank God. Right. He'll still be faithful to his word. Yeah. Uh, listen to this, Job 40 and verse 1 says, Moreover, the Lord answered Job and said, Shall he that condemneth with the Almighty instruct him? He that reproveth God, let him answer it. And then Job answered the Lord and said, Behold, I am vile. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. I am vile. What shall I answer thee? I will lay my hand. Uh, Job says, Hush my mouth. I will lay my hand upon my mouth. Once have I spoken, but I will not answer. Yea, twice, but I will proceed no further. Then answered the Lord unto Job out of the whirlwind and said, Gird up thy loins now like a man I will demand of thee and declare thou unto me. Wilt thou also disannul my judgment? Wilt thou condemn me that thou mayest be righteous? Ooh. Oh, he just gave away religion in its mm -hmm. yeah. fullness, didn't he? Yes, yes. How many churches, how many services have we attended? All of us. Mm -hmm. and, 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 you know, unfortunately, some full gospel folks even. How many have we attended where God is blamed for the suffering that people are undergoing. Oh, the Lord's trying to teach you something, sister. Amen. Well, that's a bunch of nonsense. You know, Jesus, when, when people appealed to Jesus for healing, he didn't say, it's Bartimaeus, you're going to have to stay. God's teaching you something. I'm not going to tell you. It's a mystery what he's teaching you. You know, how can you say God's wanting to teach you something when people never learn the lesson? Right. Yeah. Right. The lesson is God's not teaching you something the devil's oppressing you, right. but God's got a resolution for that. Yeah. And he's got it for those you love. Now you yes. can just keep blaming God. Yeah. You can say that people were born this way. You know, there was a, more, a man born lame at the gate beautiful. Remember mm -hmm. when Peter and John went to pray? Right. And they didn't say, well, brother, you're what a glory to God. You're suffering so so wondrously. Doesn't that just glorify? Right in front of everyone. No, yeah. <laughs> no, they said, they said, we don't have any silver or gold with us right now. Amen. But, but we got something. You want it? <laughs> they didn't even ask him. They gave it. Yeah. Such as I have give I thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. Notice when Peter addressed that. Turn over there real quick, if you would. Uh, uh, well, no, don't do it. We'll get it next time. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> I've got too much to share today. I've got too much to share today. And Robin, uh, I guess I'm going to hush here for a minute because uh, I want Robin to share with you as well. Include. Well, I, 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 we're on page two now, I think, <laughs> out of about eight pages. Let me just say this. In Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen, we're told all Scripture is given by inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. Now, some people misquote that they say all Scripture is inspired by God. No, it's given by inspiration of God. Yeah. See, God did not inspire men to lie, but men in the Bible lied. Job lied about God, even though Job it was an right ignorance. There. Sure did. God didn't inspire Job to to, to lie. Mm -hmm. He just he inspired the people who put pen to paper to record right. what was said there. Yep. So all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine. In other words, if you're going to have settled beliefs that are constants in your life, you better go to God's word because mm -hmm. it's profitable for doctrine. Right. It's profitable for correction or for reproof. That's what reproof is for correction. It, it, it's profitable for that, but only if you yield mm -hmm. to it. See, it's not yielding to it when somebody teaches you God's word on some subject such as healing or the Holy Spirit and you say, well, that's not what my church teaches. God's not going to ask you when you get to heaven, did you do what your church, church. taught you? Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> right. Your preacher ain't going to stand before God. You are. God's going to mm -hmm. say, why didn't you do the things I told you? Right. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm-hmm. Amen. And I believe it will be more with a, a longing. Why didn't you do the yes. things I told you? Yes. yes. See, instead of, you know, I can just see God telling tell something. Instead of blaming me, mm -hmm. I was there for you. Yeah. I was there for them. Yeah. yeah. Peter didn't pray and ask God to do something for that lame man at the gate. He right. took 
command of that situation yes. in the authority of Jesus' name. Yes. I mean, he, he began to do exactly what Jesus had foretold to the disciples in John. He began mm -hmm. to do the works of Jesus. Yes. Using the name of Jesus, a name above every name. See, Amen. it's a credit to God and a glory to God when you take his name upon your lips, whether it's in worship or in authority, mm. to exercise dominion over the devil and his works. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Just mm -hmm. like God the Father anointed Jesus of Nazareth to go around doing good and healing all oppressed of the devil, yeah. God has anointed his individual children. Amen. And it was so important to him that Jesus told the disciples, before you go in the world, you go get the pr promise. Mm -hmm. Over in Acts chapter 1, Acts chapter 2. What was the promise? The Holy Spirit. Right. Amen. Right. Praise God. Amen. So he said, All scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God, not just the apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, but that the man of God may be perfect or mature, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Mm -hmm. In other words, it's knowing God's word that will equip you with the knowledge you need to do the works that Jesus did. And that's why we're studying it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Robin, you want to share Amen. something? Well, I think you ought to back it up to that verse. That's so good, the end of that. That last statement mm -hmm. about justifying himself, seeking to justify himself. <laughs> His pages flipped, so he's <laughs> trying, to, um, trying yeah. to scroll it what, right there. Let's see, Job 40, verse 8. I'd love to see that in different versions. That's in the Amplified. verse. Down here is the Amplified. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. I didn't read that, did I? It said, will you also <clears throat> annul, set aside, and render void my judgment? Will you condemn me, your God, that you may appear righteous and justified? Whoa. You know, I mean, isn't it interesting what God's saying there? And I'm, I'm lingering there a little bit because I think we need to look... First off, you know, you were talking about how how many of us like to be wrong. We don't like to be wrong, but you know what? Every time, what does it talk about? You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Make you free. One of the greatest freedoms is from the lies we've told ourselves. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, and you know what? It's interesting. I've said this before, and I'm pulling back to it again. There have been situations where if... I think a lot of people have been in this situation. If you have, if you grew up in a situation where someone in your life, a person of authority, misrepresented the truth to you and behaved like a predator and held control over your life through fear, that's the same thing the devil does. The devil is the original predator, and a predator controls their victims through lies and fear fear. And so many times, I mean, think about it. I think it's interesting. If we thought God was making me sick, or if we thought God was allowing me to be sick, like Job, using Job as an excuse, you know what? Let's don't, let's don't pull comments that Job made out, out of, of context. context from the entire Word of God. How about let's go to the whole counsel of God's Word, mm -hmm. and let's see, let's, let's take a magnifying glass and let's look at the nature of, of Jesus Christ because he wanted people healed and whole. Amen. He didn't revel when anyone was sick or hurting. A and the only place where... He even tried to heal his enemies. He did. He sure did. Or the, he, he wasn't was, their enemies. He, they were his enemies. Yeah, Let me he, say it that the way. The power of God was there, was present yeah, to heal those them teachers. all. But they didn't all receive it because they were too busy doing exactly what that verse said. What was that? Uh, Job 40 verse Condemning 8. Condemning him that they might appear Condemning righteous. God. Let's not be guilty. I'm just thinking, you know, from reading that, I do not, Lord, I think we need to pray, Father God, help me to not be guilty of condemning you to justify myself. Amen. Lord, help me to not push things off on you because I need to grow and see things better. God help us because whenever, whenever we are acting like people have got to get settled that God, every good and perfect gift is from above. It's the thief who comes to steal, kill, and destroy. It is imperative that as God's children, we examine and pull out a, mic a magnifying glass. Like I said, let's look at the works of Jesus. Now, I think what you said was so good that Jesus didn't say, well, you know what? You just need, you haven't quite learned your lesson. You need to stay sick a little longer. We've got to get these boulders. We've got to get these things out of the road of healing. It's 
time for them to be done away with. It's time for them to be obliterated by the word of God, by the truth. Truth will deal with, with these kinds of things. Amen. And there are a lot of people... I find myself praying from time to time for, for people that that are friends, people that I've known for a number of years that have a mad on at God, uh -huh. have a case against God. Every bad thing that any of us can ever think of that ever occurred in your family or your loved ones was not God. Amen. We need to understand if we know the nature of God, that is settled once and for all. Amen. Now, now, I'm going to say something here. We have also seen situations where people uh, get tired in their lives, get to a place that they are ready to go on to glory. Uh, and, and you know what? It's precious. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the, the death, death of, his saints. of his saints. Now, listen, that doesn't mean we need to go prematurely. I think it's real important that we get a hold of something here because there are people that the devil is trying to beat their brains out with symptoms and with sickness, trying to w make them weary in the longness of the way. Well, Amen. guess what? You know, are we on the devil's roadway or, or, or can we get over onto God's roadway? Well, we can very easily say, Lord, show me your roadway. Help me to, and I'm going to tell you, I mean, we just need to understand that, that as we grow, Things get easier. You know, you watch, you watch, we've got all these grandbabies, and we're so blessed. We love, they're just such a hoot. And just like our own children, they, it is innate in them that they, there is, comes a day and a time they want to move on their own. At first, we're noticing with Paisley, she's wanting to grasp at things. Well, at first, she doesn't quite have that coordination, but it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long, and you'll see them get a hold of something, and they'll get a kung fu grip on it, boy. Amen. You know, and remember, newborns will latch onto your finger whenever they aren't even looking. You know, Especially it's amazing. When teething, yeah. It's amazing. Uh, but anyway, they they'll come a time they want to walk, and it's just in them. And if you tried to push them down constantly, they they get up, they get up, they fall and they get up, they Enjoy fall it. and they cry and they get up. But but God is with us. I'm thinking we need to remember something. Whenever things have been challenging, and it was so funny because I was thinking about how uh, this passage I'm looking at, the Lord, I was praying this morning and I was asking the Lord, I said, well, Lord, just as soon as I woke up, I said, okay, Lord, we're getting ready for so-and-so this week. We're getting prepared for that. What do we need to know about that? Something that in the natural, you know, is unfamiliar or could feel intimidating or could feel challenging. And <laughs> this is what I said, Father, well, Father, what do we need to know about this? And before I could have thought of it, he said, I will be with you. I thought, well, I guess that's all we need to know. Amen. <laughs> you know, whenever we realize our Father is with us, that alters everything. Uh -huh. If you are sitting in a, if somebody's sitting in a hospital room hearing this, guess what? I got good news for you. God, God is, with is with you. I'm going to go a step further. If you are sitting in a bar and you're looking at your phone or this is on Roku or somewhere or wherever, guess what? God is there with you Amen. if you reach out to him. He's not intimidated. Right. He's not he's not uh, uh, afraid <laughs> to be in these places because he loves us. Amen. God loves us so much. He is with us wherever we are and we can reach out to him. And I love this passage. There are so many passages that one could look up and build a whole wonderful sermon on how I will be with you. Usually, usually it's King James Amen. Version. I will be with thee. If you did, a, we should do a search. You know, I will be with thee. Look up, I, I, will, I will be with Joshua these scriptures. There's so many, but I love this one. And it says, this is from Joshua 1, 9. It says, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go. We need to know he's with us wherever we go, that, that he is a present help in time of need. We can draw such comfort from that, and I'm sharing this because I know of people who are struggling right now. There are people that have been hit physically, and they don't know what in the world is going on, and it's really tried to 
tried to derail them mm -hmm. or tried to challenge their faith. And I know there are some that they have they have fed on these teachings, and then at times they've they've stepped back. And I think it's due to frustration with the situation, frustra frustration with symptoms, frustration with standing. Listen to me. When we're on the right path, there's only one adversary who doesn't like it. And that's the devil. Whenever we are all looking at God's word, thanking the Lord for teaching us, thanking the Lord for helping renew our minds to the right perspective, and it doesn't take long. The Bible says, if you being evil know how to give good gifts to your God, how much, or to your children, how much more does God give the Holy Spirit to those that ask to him? Those that ask him? Uh, the huge takeaway, did you ever, if you are resisting physical symptoms or emotional symptoms, would you ever put these or those things on your own children? Of course not. Of course not. Why would we accuse, be accusers of God and act like and think or believe such a horrendous lie that he's put bad things or put challenges in our, in our life? And I got good news for us. Even when we blow it, even when we do things or make poor choices, and are needing to grow in an area, not physically. I'm going to, I'm talking about, I've seen people over the years and been there, we've been there ourselves, where you make poor financial choices and, and they get down the road and they got more payments than they got income. You know, ever been there? <laughs> I have been, we have been. But you know what? God was there to help us. Amen. <laughs> All it took was calling out calling on him lord help us in this area and this was what we also prayed don't just help us in this area we desperately need your help but help us to learn the things we need to I'm learn so glad he's to never, never said you're be on your here own. again in jesus name i'm so glad he's never said you're on your own you got to figure it out right. <laughs> yourself. So even if you know you yeah. said something about even somebody in a bar and the last time i went to a bar and got drunk oh. I didn't go there intending to get drunk, by the way. I went there because I was intending to show to to folks someone. in my life, be a witness to somebody that, that God's not all uptight and religious. Uh, you know, I, I, I could go out. In other words, I could live a testimony of God before them, be with them in places that I really didn't want to go, mm -hmm. not in my heart of hearts. And, and uh and my intention was not even to drink the first drink. But I got in that bar and I started drinking beer. And I don't remember the first one. I don't remember the last one. All I remember was I got so drunk I couldn't lift my head from the table. Oh. Oh. And I, I came to myself. I was like that prodigal in the pig end, But I wasn't maliciously running from God. I was just ignorantly doing something stupid. Mm -hmm. In my case, amen. I'm not insulting you if you're in the bar today. I'm not insulting you. No. Uh, I, I lifted up my head and I said, God, I don't know how I got here. I said, but I promise you this, you get me out of here, I'll never do it again. Right. And, and you know, the person I was with liked long goodbyes. I'm just going to let it let rest at that. <laughs> it usually took me a long time to leave one place to go to another because they were a people person and if they were with people they liked, they liked to stay with them. And so here I am and, and I made that. And the next, next conscious memory I had, we were outside this bar halfway to the car to leave. Mm-hmm. No, that was God. I knew that was God. I knew God got me out of there. Amen. Yeah. yeah. And uh, but see, there's a lot of religious folks. Oh, God would never go in a bar. <laughs> well, you know what? The, the psalmist there's said a he's. There. He said, "If I go to hell, you'll be there." That's right. You know? That's right. Yeah. And, and glory to God. You know what? God hadn't given up on you. And a lot Don't of you people, give up on him? And a lot of people are living in hell. But guess what? God is there. God is there. And in he's there hell. to show you the exit. Yes, Amen. yes. He's there, he's to, there to show you the to exit. walk us Glory out. He's there to lead us out. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Abednego were led out of that fiery furnace. They were thrown in it through no fault of their own. There are a lot of people dealing with sicknesses and illnesses literally through no fault of their own. Some who don't even know what in the world is going on that's tried to hit their household. I think it's imperative, it's smart if we will utilize God's word. Take authority over a stupid spirit of infirmity Amen. that's tried to just beat people's brains out. Keep enforcing it, thanking God. We don't bind it over and over and over. We remind it Amen. we already bound it and kicked it to the curb. You know, the Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. 
all. Out of them all. all. There's somebody right now that you're in a in in just the belly mm -hmm. of the well, so to speak. You're mm -hmm. in a miserable situation. Mm -hmm. Well, when Jonah was in the belly of the well, he kept saying, I'm going to worship again. Yeah. He physically died, but he said, I'm going to worship again at the holy temple. Yes. And, and he didn't mean in heaven above. He meant in Jerusalem. Right, <laughs> Amen. right. And, and, uh, he, and he did. <laughs> he, the, that fish, ultimately, the Lord made that fish vomit him up on dry land. Amen. Yes, yes. And uh, there's some of you out there, you need to, you, right in the middle of all this, your head is going tilt. You hear us talking about God's word and about healing, about God's the healer, not the oppressor, the afflictor. And, and what you need to do to latch hold of this is just start just start thanking God. Say, Lord, I'm going to trust you with all my heart. I'm not going to lean to my own understanding. My own understanding, all it can grasp is the doom and the gloom of the situation. But my heart tells me that you're a good God. You're yes. a faithful God and that yes. you love me. Yes. And if I were you, God, and I loved somebody, I wouldn't let them suffer like this. So, God, I believe you're delivering me from this affliction. Right. Thank you for the wisdom to walk free. Amen. And if you'll just start doing that, yes. I don't care how twisted your situation is. If you'll start looking to God, mm -hmm. amen, look unto Jesus. He's the author and the finisher. He'll right. bring your faith to the conclusion. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. A, a, yes. a successful conclusion if you yes. just keep looking at him. Amen. Amen. We've got to pray and go, yep. go don't ahead. we? Go ahead. Father, we just thank you so much for those who are with us today. We thank you for those that will look look at this teaching, this message online. Yep. I thank you, Father, that in the hearing of your word, faith comes. Yes. I thank you that thank your you word is sharper than a two-edged sword. It's piercing to the dividing asunder of the soul and spirit. In other words, it's helping people distinguish their thoughts from God's thoughts so yes. they can embrace God's thoughts, yes. Father. Thank you for all that you are showing us today, and you'll continue to yes. show us as we look to you, as we trust in you. Now, yes. if you're out there and you've never received Jesus mm -hmm. as your Lord and Savior, heaven is as easy as this. Make this confession of faith. God the Father, I come to you right now in the yes. name of Jesus. Yes. I believe that Jesus is Lord, and I claim him as my personal Lord and Savior, yes. because I believe you, Father God, you raised him from the dead. Yes. And you said, uh, it's with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. It's with his mouth confession is made unto salvation. Yes. Thank you that as I claim Jesus as Lord and believe in his resurrection today, in my heart, yeah. in my heart, Father, you said I'm saved. I thank yes. you that I'm born again now. Yes. I'm your child. And you said, he that cometh unto me, I'll in no wise cast out. Right. Amen. Good news. <laughs> <laughs> Lord, I'm determined you'll never get rid of me. That's right. That's <laughs> Glory right. to God. Thank you for loving thank me. You, Father. Thank you for loving me when I was unlovable. Yes. Thank you for loving me still in Jesus' name. In Jesus Amen. name. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Thank you for being here with us. We will see you next week. Amen. 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 Amen.